Hi, there are special mats to texture polymer clay, but what if stems for scrapbooking will manage to perform the mat function well? Today's video will be full of experiments, but it's safe to say that many of them were quite a success. It all began with my desire of making traces pendant from The Witcher. But I'm not good at carving and sculpting, I have no experience, and this process is one of the few which makes me really mad. Nevertheless, I decided to bake at least anything with tiny beads to see whether it's okay to bake it with half beads which I have, or it's better to attach them later. And yeah, it's better to add them to your creations only after baking your clay. It may be super obvious to somebody, but I was really curious to check it. The clay easily came off my pendant, so I kept trying. I decided to experiment, because I remembered that I had such a silicone stamp. It's not like the one Trace had, but the pattern is also interesting. I took the polymer clay which Rosalina sent me, because it was she who suggested me trying cernet clay. And you know, it's quite soft, it's a nice material to work, but sometimes it's too soft. Maybe I just haven't understood the whole nuances working with this clay. I work on a silicone mat, which I cut out of a round mold from AliExpress, and yeah, I still don't have a roller for clay, so I use a pencil and smooth the clay with my fingers. If you make small figures, such a way of work is quite acceptable. This rolled pancake is just the right size, so we can take the stamp. This stamp has pretty small elements, so I took dry pigment and buffed it into the upper layer of clay. In the video about sealing wax, where I faced the problem when polymer clay didn't want to come off the stems with small patterns, the subscribers advised me to freeze it, but I haven't tried it yet. As you see, I didn't manage to make this stamp on the first try anyway, because I missed the spot when I was buffing the pigment, but on the second try everything was perfect. I decided to add a little of blue, and then I took green pigment to make at least a little resemblance to the original pendant I wanted to make. But then I realized that it wouldn't work, and then I realized that this was an experiment during which I am buffing the pigment into clay, which had already been covered with pigment. So the result was bad. It means that if you try to cover clay with pigment, into which the pigment has already been buffed, nothing good will happen. Although here it depends on the color and the effect you want to achieve. Next I place the frame and press it to cut out the pendant. If you do it with fingers, you might accidentally touch the inner part of clay and ruin the pattern, that's why I pressed the frame with a pencil in order to avoid touching the clay. Cutting out the excess of clay and the pendant is ready. Carefully unstick it and put it away till baking. This pendant was more like a try, so I wanted to move on to the pendants, which would be a little nicer. I took the stamps, which are already familiar to you, and for the decor, except different dry pigments, I took a lot of nail powder. I roll the clay and take a stamp. For visualization, you can put a contour pendant on a stamp and choose the one which suits you better. Stamps with deep patterns without small details leave a nice imprint. The only thing is that the edges of a stamp also leave a contour, but you can carefully smooth it with a finger or a tool. I highlighted the protruding parts with golden powder and began cutting out the pendant.
Of course, in such a technique you don't necessarily need contour pendants. You can make such pre-mates for rings, earrings, the same pendants and cut out random shapes with a knife or such cutters. You can combine this technique with some other techniques and maybe it will become a part of some painting. Why not? And if we go back to the contour pendant topic, I like using contour pendants because they give some kind of completeness to a pendant, despite the fact that I love paintings without frames and there are many panels without them as well. But in this case, this is like a frame for a painting. But using contour pendants, it's preferably to take a knife to cut off the excess of clay. It will help to avoid any tearing down here, and the clay will be as even as before. You can also even clay after you've taken the detail from the work surface. Next, I took white clay, but before the start, I advise you to wash your hands. If there are a lot of specks of dust on your clay, try working in gloves, it helps a lot. I decided to make a lavender on it. It looked so nice on white clay, but as today I experiment with clay and pigments, I decided to color the flowers. You can replace pearl pigments by dry pastel or eyeshadows. Or, for example, you can bake clay first and then paint the pressed parts with acrylics. Like I did before, using a pencil, I press the pendant and here we go, with one more pendant ready to go into an oven. For the next one, I decided to take black polymer clay and do a chrome powder for nails. Yeah, once I experimented was a heart by using nail powder on resin. But I must say that it's much easier to apply the powder on clay. Here I decided to make mountains. The stamp left a contour again. This one. This one I'm talking about. But it's okay, I'll try to smooth it with my finger. I apply powder and if you look from this angle, the powder looks purple, and if you look from above, the powder is blue. Such a cool effect! You can choose which part of the pattern you want and then cut it out. I noticed that when you roll the clay with metallic effect, such pearl swirls appear because of the pigment in the composition. In our case, it can bring us benefit. You can use it as some kind of a design as well. If it doesn't work for you, simply wedge the clay and roll it again. In the green background there will be a forest. I decided to apply green pearl semi-transparent powder on a stamp and see what would happen. There is some effect on clay, but it's quite weak. Although we don't know how this powder would have looked like if I had applied it directly on clay, and I got this idea only now, I should have definitely made these to compare. Well, never mind. A bit differently you should work with pendants where a loop sticks out of the contour. Place the clay at the edge of the mat and then cut everything off along the contour of the work surface. So that you can place a contour pendant to make the loop stick out of the clay. If your mat is not silicone, maybe you work on a simple sheet of paper, you can place a thick piece of cardboard or a box, a notebook or even a book, nothing will happen to it. But for you, it will be much more comfortable to work. Here I decided to make pansies, but the problem was that they were so small that I needed to take black pigment. Well, I rolled this piece of clay quite unevenly, but it's okay. And here I also wanted to add golden glitter. I applied it using a brush, because I didn't want it to form a full golden coat like Dutch metal does. 
So I applied it with these tapping movements onto some spots. Carefully put up the stamp, although it's stuck to clay, but we can simply carefully unattach it. And the result was above all my expectations. I press a pendant and leave the rest of clay. You can use it later, but it will be with some glitter. If you want to save some clay without adding any pigment, you can in such a way make a contour of your future working space and then cut off the excess of clay with a knife before you've added any pigments. It's desirable to leave at least 2 mm between the contour you've made and the cut line. Imagine that you're cutting, next you can apply decker and then you can take out your pendant. Now all the pendants go to oven. I bake them according to the instruction on the packaging. And here is one more nuance. Clay doesn't stick to contour pendant by itself. That's why I carefully took it out and applied some super glue to edges. It won't be seen later. I mean the contour which touches the pendant. And then I put the clay base into the pendant. Now everything is ready for sure. You can wear these pendants with a chain, a cord or a ribbon. It's also possible to modify these pendants with epoxy or UV resin, but maybe next time. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. Many thanks to my sponsors for support. I love you this much. Bye! Thank you.